Welcome everyone to the Health, Wellness, and Fitness Meet the Employer event. This event is brought to you in partnership with faculty, alumni, student and graduate employment, and the employer partners joining us today. Um, my name is Sherry Wade, career advisor on the student and graduate employment team. The Meet the Employer event gives us an opportunity to hear firsthand the success stories and career journeys of your fellow alumni and a chance to network with local employers while learning about sector trends and current job opportunities. Without further ado, I'll pass it along to Manager of Career and Student Success Advising, Pearl Mendonza, uh, for our land acknowledgement. Thank you, Pearl. Thanks, Sherry. Um, so just to start out our event um, with our land acknowledgement. Um, so I acknowledge, uh, so actually I live in downtown Hamilton, uh, really close to the college. So um, this sort of applies to the area that I'm in. Um, I acknowledge that Mohawk College is situated on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe nations within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement and is currently home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. So as settlers on this land, um, we have an opportunity um, to, uh, first of all, acknowledge the uh, first peoples on this land and really work towards truth and reconciliation, which is an important part of our strategic plan at Mohawk College. And so you'll see um, that that's an important piece um, as, uh, as part of our strategic plan, as part of the work that's done uh, within the community and as part of uh, all of our areas. So, um, with that, I will turn it over to Tara um, from the Health Wellness Fitness Program to uh, take over as MC. Hi, welcome everybody. It's great to see you all and I'm particularly excited to welcome back some of our wonderful alumni. I want to take just a minute to introduce them and then we're going to delve into some questions with them that they can share with you about their path and their journey. So I'll start with um, Katarina Balmazen, also known as Kat. She is the founder of Wildcat Moves, which is an exclusive online training and fitness service that teaches and promotes functional movement and creative fitness. Kat is a certified personal trainer with over 10 years of experience, steel mace flow coach and animal flow coach, which she has told us is COVID acquired skills. Kat graduated from Mohawk, in the health wellness fitness program in 2019, equipped with knowledge, both academic and practical to launch into the ever growing fitness industry. After completing the program, Kat was immediately hired by Good Life Fitness and still works there. Kat aims to empower and motivate clients by combining and introducing them to what Kat calls unconventional fitness, inspired by martial arts, dance, flow movement, and badassery in general. So Kat, welcome. It's so great to see you and have you back to share your story. And I'm going to next introduce Guillermo Tamanini, otherwise affectionately known as GT. He is another wonderful graduate from the class of 2020. And he has been working as a personal trainer since January 2020 and as a manager since August 2020. As a momentum fitness manager, his duties are to schedule tours, manage client scheduling, training, guidance, online classes, managing gym supplies, maintenance, personal training, scheduling personal training sessions for personal trainers, and follow-ups with our clients. So welcome to both Kat and GT. We're so grateful to have you join us. And uh, I think I'm just going to launch right into some questions. So Kat, if we could start with you, could you share with us what your career path has been since you've graduated? I know I shared some of that, but... Uh, so... After my after we graduated, or just in a process of graduating, and uh, between like the final exams and actually getting to the graduation ceremony, I was hired by Good Life, and all I did is I went on their uh, on their website. I needed a job. My life like collapsed in those last few days of the of the last semester, and I needed to be. Um, self-sufficient and independent immediately and I didn't care where I worked as long as it it was in the fitness uh, community or in a fitness industry so 
uh, I just took it upon myself and I figured I'm going to go into good life. It's a sure job. Uh, and it actually is. I have been working at Good Life since May of two, 2019. So over two years now, I have a solid schedule. Uh, the great thing about Good Life is that it gives you a lot of opportunities and you get to meet, meet a lot of people and you actually get to figure out what you like about the fitness industry. Uh, but then as we were ushered into COVID uh, and that whole thing happened, uh, as you know, everything closed down. We were in shutdown. And even though there, was, there were benefits and I was still financially stable, I started to get bored. So I picked up a mace. I got a few more certifications and I started coaching people online for you know a little bit here and there just to fill up the hours and then I realized like I can this can be the thing now so that's how wildcat moves was born and I do everything online um I don't have a website because I can't think there's certain things that I can afford and I can't afford but um I'm keeping I don't know if this makes sense but I kind of I'm kind of keeping the restaurant hours so Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of pays for itself. And that's where Wildcat Moves comes in. And then Monday through Thursday, I work at Good Life with the Good Life clients. Um, and it's been solid work so far. I have realized how I wanted to coach, what I wanted to coach and who I wanted to coach in Good Life. And that kind of gave me the integrity to put into my business and my business plan and not just frantically run around. I think that I'm going to leave it there. And if you have any question, just ask. That's great. Yeah. And I know that there will be a chance to chat with the um, alumni, but you can also feel free to put them in the chat bar. And when we have a chance, we'll come to those as well. So GT, I'm going to ask the same question to you. What has been your career path since you've graduated? So I... I started um, an internship in while where I was doing uh, taking health, wellness, and fitness at the Forge soccer team, and I did my placement, my first placement over there. And on 2020, at the beginning of April 2020, I got hired uh, by them. So I was the strength and conditioning coach for the entire season of 2020, uh, literally in the middle of a pandemic. It was a very different way to work with a professional athlete with a professional um, team soccer team because we we were also doing everything online so imagine uh, coaching 25 30 uh, players like professional players doing their thing at home uh, and they don't have a lot of uh, things over there so it was a very very challenging time for me to discover how can I, how I was going to be able to improve their fitness level, their strength level to be ready for a full season of games. And in the same time, I got the managing uh, opportunity at Momentum. And it was something that I was looking for because I, want, I also wanted to work on the administering and side just to know a little bit more about um, that um, and also I'm also a physio uh, and I'm in the process to take my license which working as a manager working as a personal trainer working as a strength coach gave me a little bit of possibilities in terms of um, exercise variety to work with my clients as a PT and also right now working as a physio and later on to work as a full-time job as a physio that was going to be my pathway. So uh, this past 2021, uh, I have been focusing on my physio license. So I took my written exam in March, expecting that I was going to be able to take my clinical exam like in August, but uh, unfortunately, uh, things didn't go well uh, for, not for me, I passed the written exam, but for the, the board that does the 
the clinical part, they cancel all the, the, the tests. So we'll, it's going to be postponed to next year. So in between, I'm still working at Momentum and I'm just preparing myself to be a full-time physio and later on maybe to open something with uh, Tyler, that the, the owner at Momentum, to open up a little bit like a wellness space uh, inside Momentum. So that's one of the goals. That's great. And thank you so much for sharing your pathways, both of you. I know I can speak on behalf of the health, wellness, fitness team when I say how proud we are of all you've accomplished, especially in the face of the adversity that we have seen over the last couple of years. Uh, for those that are watching this recording later, I do want to mention that both CAT and GT are, um, we stay in touch. I know I stay in touch with them myself. If you have questions for them at, when you're watching the recording, please feel free to reach out to me and I can uh, try to connect with them and get an answer to your question. But for now, let's move on and get some more information while we have them here and live. So uh, we'll go back to you, Kat. We, uh, we know that there are some soft skills required in a profession. Above and beyond the technical training that you've received, what are some soft skills that you would think that, that you could say have helped you succeed? Um, I would say most importantly, it would be time management. Because um, especially when you start to work at a big box gym like Good Life, you want to get you, as many clients as you want as you can as soon as possible so your schedule might work might look something like you're working from nine in the morning uh, or eight nine ten sometimes seven sometimes six uh, till noon then you might have a few hour break then your afternoon starts and or you might have to do you know a client every other hour but and you're also working weekends and so getting to the point of me going well I can't quite sustain myself on six days a week and actually honoring my sleep and need to eat and need to train and to have kind of a downtime and go like my schedule is and then realizing when I like to wake up when I like to work and interact with my clients and with people make phone calls do all the administration and then going past this time I am unavailable unless it's my bestie or my mom or God forbid, knock on wood, something is terribly wrong. So that has actually empowered me to go like, no, no, I work from 7 a.m. to noon, and then I will be working two hours in the afternoon, and that's it. That is my schedule from Monday to Friday. If it doesn't fit you, I will 100% find you another trainer who can help you. But no, I can't come in at 6, and no, I'm not staying past 6 p.m. at the gym. Uh, so I would say be, be responsible to yourself when you are creating your time schedule because you eventually will run out of time, which means you will run out of patience and you will run out of sleep. And that's when everything collapses and then you have to take mental health days and or you get super overwhelmed and you just go, this is not for me, I'm going to quit this thing sucks and you become very melodramatic. Um, so yeah, not to repeat myself again, I would say time management would be the best skill that you can have. That's great. It's, it's ironic in a profession where we're so, um, we're so focused on helping others achieve healthy life work balance, that it's really important that we do that for ourselves as well. Thanks for sharing that Kat. GT, I'm gonna give you the next question. Uh, have you pursued additional education and training throughout your career? Uh, yes. Um, like I said, I, in Brazil, I came, I moved uh, to Canada in 2019. I, in Brazil, I was a physio. I'm trying to be a physio here, but I'm not going to leave uh, the personal training side. So taking health, wellness, and fitness, it was another career uh, pathway that I opened up for me. Uh, that I'm, I'm able to take more clients, to understand a little bit more about nutrition, about exercising, about programming, about um, dealing with clients. Because uh, being a physio in Brazil was, you have clients and everything, but it's a, just a different type of client. It's just like people that it's in pain or they're seeking um, 
a different kind of help that um, being a personal trainer uh, and enrolled on the health, wellness, and fitness will fit in. Like people trying to get a little bit of uh, de-stress because uh, they are stressed at, uh, at their job, especially now with COVID, working from home, you don't have the time, a proper time management, uh, which I, I agree with Kat. Uh, that is a very, very, very important uh, thing that you have to understand. It's time management and dealing with frustration at work and dealing with uh, the nutrition side. So it's just a different way for me taking health, wellness and fitness to look a little bit wider on the big, bigger picture from my clients. It doesn't matter if it's my physio client either, or my PT client. So uh, yes, health, wellness, and fitness was my uh, second course, I would say. I'm probably going to take other courses, unfortunately, right now because of my uh, permanent residency. I'm not allowed to take uh, certifications or any other courses. Uh, I have to start only working, which is a little bit annoying because I I received so many opportunities to take some other courses, but unfortunately I'm not available for, for now, but for sure I'm going to take some, some other courses. Uh, and you have to keep studying. You have to keep updating uh, your know-how you have to, it's something that it's, it's over there. Uh, it's nothing. It's not that you're going to take the health wellness and fitness and you're going to stop learning no you have to to keep reading keep updating yourself keep um knowing that everything changes especially with the internet right now last year uh we had to learn how to do online coaching so a lot of us was just caught like without knowing how to do it and we had to to learn how to do it so you have to be improving yourself every single day so courses or for the rest of your of my life probably yes lifelong learners right yeah we do get That's the, lots of great skills in the program and then hopefully yeah. expose you to other opportunities once you graduate and I think from both of you I was hearing and uh it, and you know we've been noticing this as well how prevalent the term wellness has become we've always looked at the importance of that but you know, really it's become so critical over the last two years now, as we see that it's something we can take a, a, a bigger control of in our lives and help our clients do. So Kat, next question for you. What do you see as the coming trends in your sector that new graduates should know about? Um, I see a lot of functional fitness and functional training coming up. Um, so, uh, things with kettlebells and maybe it's because of like the circles that I'm moving in. I'm pretty sure that if you ask, you know, power lifters or, or Olympic lifters that they would say like, no, no, Olympic lifting is here to stay, get your certification so you can teach people how to properly do a snatch. And then if you ask the yoga, uh, people, they're going to say, no, no, yoga is the new thing. Um, as I said, I do unconventional training and unconventional fitness, and a lot of people that I train with or that I get inspired by are um, doing things like animal flow. Uh, I am seeing an influx of things like kettlebells and things like vipers and things that you can find that you can have in your house. Because of the pandemic, I think a lot of people have upgraded and added things. And because we, most of us live in small, in small compartments, in small apartments, we don't have, you know, the, um, uh, the privilege of the, you know, garage gym or the basement gym. So things like equalizers have become a really big thing. Things like kettlebells, um, steel clubs. There are manufacturers who are making like sledgehammers that look like Thor's hammers and they're called like the Asgardians or so there's a lot of things coming in uh, that are portable I would say and that are easy to store and sometimes it's even no equipment so body weights or uh, monster bands or any kind of resistance bands like literally things that you can do in your own um, in your own living room and in your bedroom and I think it's an excellent way to kind of look at 
a creative part of fitness where you can literally use anything. I have had Zoom training sessions with my clients who are like, I don't have anything. I just have a cushion and a bottle. It's like, great, we're going to use a cushion and a bottle. So you actually get to invent your own workouts. And because you have the uh, theoretical and the academic training and knowledge, you know how to do that. We know how to do that. We know how to create things and make workouts that are going to be both functional. They're going to be, uh, they're going to train strength or agility or stability or whatever you need to do. So I think because of the pandemic, we're kind of stuck with things that we can carry. And I think that might be a new thing for the next few years. I love it. I, I echo that. I know when I when the pandemic first hit and I was teaching my boot camps online, one of my participants had no dumbbells and was using garden gnomes and it was the best ever. I was like, perfect. Every, anything that works, right? Yeah. Uh, GT, on, on top of what uh, Kat was saying, is there anything you would add? I know we've kind of got the, the good life big box viewpoint of that and you're at a boutique studio. Do you have some, some other things you might have seen coming along the way as trends? The past, I have to say, the past three months that uh, everything was started open up again, a lot of clients would, like came to Momentum asking to move. So I would say movement because a lot of people just like cats said, they're stuck at home, just working, working for home, and they don't know how to do time management. So they're working from seven to whatever time it is. And they don't have space. They don't have the knowledge um, on how to move. So a lot of clients, a lot of members uh, came to Momentum asking, show me how I have to move. I, 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 I don't care about um, losing weight. I just need to feel good. And I know that exercise will, will uh, make me do it, make me feel good. So um the past three months, I have all my clients, all my starter sessions, uh, all the um, starting point for clients. It's all about movement. Sometimes I don't even even use any dumbbells and I'm inside the gym. So it's just body weight. It's just teaching them how their body moves. That's, that's something that uh, for me, the past three months, is, or it's been like, wow. Like, because usually people come to like, I want to lose weight. I want to get stronger. And now people are realizing, like you said, wellness. I just want to move. I just don't want to be seated at home every single day, every single time. Yeah, that's great insight. You know, it's, it's something we can control right now at a time when lots of other things feel out of control. And I think tapping into this time management thing that's come up a few times, uh, a, a colleague of mine in the industry made such a great point one day and said, one of the biggest excuses we've heard for years in the fitness industry is I don't have time. Well, now we kind of launched forward into this virtual space at a much rapider pace than we would have without the pandemic, which in a way creates a solution to that problem. So looking at this virtual environment as a, as a possible solution for that as well. Uh, thanks, GT. That's great. So Kat, I'm going to ask you the next question. What resources should new graduates use to find work in the field? For example, do you have any advice on people or places they should turn to? Um, hmm. Meet new, I know it's really hard because even, even two years ago when I graduated, <laughs> uh, it was so much easier to walk into the gym and kind of present your resume or talk to someone or it's, we've changed so much in the past two years. Um, I would say that the, um, the virtual space has become kind of our meeting ground. So um, anyone who is who has a friend, which we all do at studios, at uh, companies, at places, is, uh, like GT said, going to need someone to teach them how to move. So even going into offices, and I do have a friend who was working, who is now solely working with like corporate wellness, and they're doing Zoom meetings first thing in the morning. And all he did was say, I will give your uh, members like a stretching lesson 
for a discount and they hired him and now he's like the trainer for that little company. So there are opportunities literally everywhere. You just have to figure out what you want to do. Do you want to teach kids? Do you want to go into uh, and teach elderly and go um, into an old people's home? Do you want to work at the actual gym? Then go to their websites. You can find work on Instagram. You can find work on TikTok. And I don't mean like Instagram famous. I actually mean finding clients and finding resources and finding people who can help you find work. I think we are extremely lucky that our virtual world has opened, that I, for example, can train someone who actually lives in Brazil, which is literally the most amazing thing, uh, that I can train someone who lives in Scotland. Like you, we are now in space-time continuum where we can literally do anything. And I truly honestly feel that I don't mean it because I'm living it like I'm experiencing that I don't mean it as like, you know, you can do whatever you want if you put your mind to it, which you probably can. But we have this technological advancement that we have launched ourselves into in the past year and a half that is allowing us to connect with anyone and everyone in the world. So I would say figure out what you want to do, what you feel like your soul and your body will be happiest doing, and then contact those people and see how they can help you, first of all, and how you can help them. That's great. Thank you. I used to have a saying I shared with the students of shake the hand of everyone you meet, but I'm going to have to come up with a new one right now since we shouldn't be shaking hands. Uh, along those lines, GT, similar question, but just a little bit different. We talk a little bit about mentors and people you should uh, look up to to help you. After college, you know, we've all had these on the job mentors. Can you share with us some people that have helped you along the way in your career path? Uh, for sure, Tyler. For sure, Tyler. Hey, He's the owner at Momentum, and he opened up the, the door at Momentum for me to grow. That's it. To, to start working, to be available for a lot of clients. Yes, we were on the, in the middle of a pandemic, but he opened up, okay, this is, I have availability to do uh, twice or three times per week to do online coaching with clients. Uh, online classes are you up to so he was one of the I think he was the one that opened up everything for me and he was having my back um, supporting me whatever decision I was taking uh, for example right now I'm just shifting to towards uh, being a, a full-time physio and he still you no know, go ahead I know that you want to do it and we're going to meet later on, later in life. We're going to have something together. So he was, he was, in a, he is an amazing person. And he's, uh, he, I don't have anything bad to, to, to say about him. It's Tyler was, and he is amazing. I second that. I know Tyler well as, as well, yeah. and he's a wonderful guy. So uh, we just have a few minutes left because we want to keep things moving along. So I'm going to have, this will be the same question for both of you and I'll cat, uh, pose it to you first. This is a, a great question for the students listening. What is one piece of advice or knowledge you wish you had known at the start of your career that you now know? Um, it's not great words of wisdom, but like old people are freaking amazing. I did not think that I was going to enjoy training elderly and they're literally my favorite clients. I actually was trying to move away. I wanted to be the cool trainer that trains like athletes and young people. And, and then I realized like, oh, we're impossible to train. We're kind of annoying and slightly insane. And we don't listen to our trainers. And then once I started training elderly women, my life just opened. I enjoy every session. They're full of stories. They are hilarious. They will do anything. So you can still teach them how to deadlift. You can still teach them how to uh, squat properly. And they're there because they're old. They have nothing to do. And you're probably their best friend that day. Uh, 
So, well, I guess the big thing is you don't know until you know. Like, I didn't think that I would enjoy training elderly. And now they're my favorite group of people. And I think in my soul, I am a 75 year old lady. <laughs> and I definitely, most of my clients are over 60 and I absolutely love it. And I enjoy every session. That's great. Uh, there's a saying that I love that it's better to be 70 years young than 40 years old. And uh, that, that resonates with me, that, that group for that reason. So GT, same question to you. What does one piece of advice or knowledge you wish you had known at the start of your career? Don't be focused on one thing, open up. Think out of, out of the box, open up. Like Kat said, uh, most of the health wellness and fitness, uh, your students come to the, to the class, start a program, no, I want to be with, um, athletes and want to be with a very small uh, portion of the population. And like Kat said, like you have way more than that. You have a whole world behind you that you can look and enjoy whatever you're, you're going to be doing. Uh, so open up, just open up, open and think out of, of the box. That's it. That's great advice. Thank you, both of you. So we have just a couple of minutes left. I don't know if there's any chats that have come or questions that have come through the chat bar or if anyone that is joining us now would like to pose a question before we move on. Maybe I'll pause for just a minute and see. Nothing in the chat bar. I think that uh, GT and Kat will be available for a few minutes after as well, if someone wanted to meet with them. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to turn it back to Sherry. Thank you, Tara. Okay, so now we are moving into the networking portion of the event. Um, without further ado, I'm first going to welcome uh, David Friedman from Good Life. Please go ahead. Just get uh, myself on, on, on camera. Hello, everybody. Uh, is it okay if I share a screen or I can I do that or? Absolutely. You have permission to share. Okay, wonderful. So let me get into that. And now I want to also uh, welcome uh, a few of my colleagues. Uh, if they want to join me for the presentation, that would be great. Uh, I have uh, with me over here, uh, Teddy, uh, which is from also from the talent acquisition. And I have uh, Kendall with me from the talent acquisition as well. Uh, I myself also from the department of the talent acquisition uh, with Good Life. And it's a fancy name for recruiters. Uh, we are on the prowl for uh, looking uh, for uh, fitness professionals on all, uh, on all levels, uh, whether it's trainers, whether it's... Um, uh, um, uh, fitness advisors, which are membership sales, uh, anybody that wants to help people to become uh, in better health, better uh, 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 and fitter, uh, we are there to, uh, to welcome them to our, our uh, troops. So uh, I'm going to start uh, by a quick uh, presentation of our company and what is Good Life. So uh, our purpose is to give uh, everyone in Canada the opportunity to, to, be, to live a fit, a healthy, uh, good life. Uh, it's in the name. Uh, we want everyone to feel comfortable in our clubs. Uh, they're, they're in the last uh, year or a couple of years uh, of the pandemic, we had a very good kind of uh, um, uh, uh time to stop and to think and to look inside especially in our uh on our diversity uh equity and our inclusion uh that's why we also change our purpose our purpose uh, used to be to any canadian now it's to everyone in canada um we have a whole department that are working on diversity uh, we have a task force from our employees that are uh uh, involved in diversity. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, being uh, in good life in the clubs uh, is comfortable for everybody uh, from all walks of life. Uh, and and, 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 and they're, they know if they would look, if they're looking for a place to work out that feels like a community, good life is the place. 
Um, I want to, uh, I, I don't want to drop my, my colleagues into the, the mix, but if they want to help me to uh, kind of like uh, share the, uh, the next slide of, uh, of our company, uh, Kendall, Teddy. Sure. Yeah, I'll go ahead, David. Wonderful. Uh, thanks. So as many of you probably know, um, Good Life is totally Canadian owned and operated. We were established in 1979 and we are the largest fitness company in Canada, the third largest in the world, in fact. Um, so one in 35 Canadians are actually Good Life members, which we're very proud of. We have over 300 clubs across Canada. We were the recipient of the 10 most admired corporate cultures in Canada. We are very proud of our culture and all of our clubs in our home office corporate. Um, we are also the winner of Canada's 50 best managed companies for eight years straight. And we have 2,400 personal trainers um, who have chosen to pursue a career with Good Life. So we're very proud of that. And I believe you had uh, one of our trainers uh, on, on uh, the alumni presentation. Uh, so kudos. Uh, yeah, well, we'll move forward. Uh, Kendall, you wanna, you wanna do the next one or you want me to do the next one? So we'll uh, introduce you. Sure, hi. Hi, Kendall. I don't know if anyone can see me or hear me. We're, I'm having, I'm having difficulties, you. there we go. <laughs> Awesome. Sorry, I had uh, technical difficulties there. Um, anyway, hi, my name is Kendall. I'm also a talent acquisition specialist with Good Life Fitness. Thank you for having us. So um, culture. So as you've probably heard, we are the recipient of 10 most admired corporate cultures in Canada. We are the winner of Canada's 50 best managed companies for eight years. Our associates are the face of Good Life. They interact with our members every day. Our employees are vital team members in creating Good Life's corporate culture. Good Life offers a fun, high energy place to work and a positive environment that enriches people's lives. Good Life provides a culture that motivates people to succeed, help others, and share a common interest of personal fitness in our clubs. We have position openings for club operations, personal training, uh, corporate home office, including remote opportunities. Yeah, so uh, there's tons of opportunity. We're looking for people, uh, a lot of people now uh, in all our positions uh, from the front desk or what we call motivators all the way up to uh, fitness manager, assistant fitness managers and some divisional managers as well. So a lot of opportunity if you would like to work, to work remotely, we have those options as well. Um, and uh yeah, and we're going to be in the break room uh, uh, after that, if you'd like to ask us questions. Uh, I believe that between the three of us, there is at least 40 years of experience with Good Life. Um, I myself have been with Good Life for 16 years in different roles. So it just shows you that uh, you can evolve at Good Life. I started as a trainer. I was a fitness manager. Uh, I was a divisional manager. And now I'm uh, in talent acquisition. Uh, and I believe my colleagues uh, have done uh, some sort of a role to role uh, type uh, in good life as well. So there is room to grow. There is room to evolve. There is room to uh, invent yourself every day. Uh, I believe there's some questions in the chat or am I, uh, is that? Uh... I don't think yeah, we have I... a question. Oh, do we have a question, David? No, I'm, I'm no. Good. We're, we're good. We're here to talk. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate you. No problem. Thank you for having um, us. Yeah, and thank you for joining. Appreciate that. So moving on to the um, next, we have uh, Janica from Movadi Athletic. Please go ahead. Um, hello, hello. This is Janica, and I'm the Town Acquisition Specialist for Movadi Athletic. Um, and I also have Mark with us today and he's right here we're going to share a screen um, he's our personal training manager at our Burlington location and he'll speak to you a little bit further but half his staff right now half his personal training team is actually from Mohawk so alumni from Mohawk so we're pretty happy about that but a little bit more about myself I've actually been in the industry for 25 years um, worked with a lot of different colleges and placement students so we're very excited to be working with Mohawk and have have hired a few over the last uh, couple of years that have done our placements. Um, we, Movadi basically has, uh, yes, Mark is actually alumni of our, of Mohawk as well. Hey so Tara, nice to see you again. 
so it's become a little bit more informal here. But basically with Movadi, a very proud of part of the Movadi team, we currently have 18 clubs throughout Canada. Um, we are also Canadian owned. Our founder and CEO started our company 24 years ago, uh, 17 clubs in Ontario, and we successfully opened up, uh, actually our most successful opening ever was happening during COVID in June out in Edmonton. And we will be um, adding on a few more clubs out in the West sooner than later. Uh, let's see. So we are 18 clubs, uh, affordable luxury, we call it. We offer six studios, uh, over 150 fruit fitness classes at our clubs, as well as we employ about 150 staff at our clubs, at all of our new prototype clubs. And um, what else? Uh, we have a place that we try to make everybody feel welcome, feel comfortable and feel healthy. And I'm going to let uh, Mark take it over here. He's our personal training manager in um, Burlington and an alumni from Mohawk. Hey, everyone. Tara, nice seeing you again. I remember eight years ago you taught me. Anyways, as a graduate of the Mohawk College program, I know how great it is. And with a lot of our personal trainers here, we really want to focus on career-minded trainers. We want to make this a career, and we do everything we can to support our trainers to get to where they need to be. I myself came in at a lower level trainer, worked my way up, worked my way up to management. And it was just really nice to see that a company invested in me and gave me what I need to be successful. And yeah, we really do strive to get career minded personal trainers because the industry needs a lot more of us. So thank you. If you have any questions for us, jump into the chat or we'll see us uh, see you in the breakout room. Awesome. Thank you, Jenica, and thank you, uh, Mark. Um, Lucinda Jensen from uh, Certified Professional Trainers Network. Thanks, Sherry. Hi, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Um, is there a big black mark in front of my face? No, there we go. Um, my name is Lucinda Jensen. I'm the Education and Certification Manager for uh, Certified Professional Trainers Network. I have been in the fitness industry in Canada for over 30 years. Um, I'm a previous recipient on two occasions of the Earth Ontario Personal Trainer of the Year Award. And I am a founder of the Certified Professional Trainers Network, which is a national association uh, for individuals looking to become certified fitness uh, trainers uh, across Canada. Um, for those of you who are eligible to work during your studies, um, the role of fitness professional could open many doors for you. I know many of you at Mohawk do co-op uh, periods. And if you're working in a facility such as a studio or a fitness facility, if you have a certification as a fitness professional, your experience will be that much more enriched um, if you are certified. And you can get certified as early as your first year of um, schooling under your belt. Now, although we are not an employer, we do provide our certified trainers and members with up-to-date instructor and industry job availability. So we do offer you that. And if you attend my room after this little presentation, I will provide you with some up-to-date stats that we just garnered from our certified trainers over the last month that will help to give you some idea of where the industry is going and where the niches are, et cetera. So thank you very much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Lucinda. And next we have Genevieve from YMCA. I'm just getting myself off mute. <laughs> Hi everybody, do you mind if I screen share, is that okay? Yes, please go ahead. Great, so thanks for having us. Just give me just one second here. Great, so um, thank you. I'm happy to be here on behalf of uh, the Wine St. Hamilton Burlington Bradford. We've had a lot of uh, long-standing partnerships with Mohawk College, so uh, really happy to be pleased here. And my son is a current student in Mohawk, uh, so I know how great the programs and services are there. So uh, just I wanted to put out there right now, there's lots of career opportunities, actually. So I've been with the YMCA for almost uh, 24 years and actually started in uh, group fitness and health and wellness. And uh, now I'm, I'm a senior regional manager 
uh, looking after our health and fitness and aquatic centers across the region of Hamilton, Burlington, and Brantford. Um, so there's staff to us are the one of the, is, they are the most important asset in our organization. And you know, one of the things that that I love and have valued about the YMCA is that while you come in, uh, may come into an area like health and wellness, the opportunity to grow and expand beyond that and be a part of something. Um, you know, much larger in the organization is always a great opportunity within the, the charitable sector. Um, staff work to achieve the mission, vision, and values of our organization. Uh, one of the things that we do is provide financial assistance to the community. And, uh, you know, over 40% of the individuals we serve receive financial assistance. And we have a long history. We've been serving the community for over 165 years. Um, our mission is to help people achieve personal growth in spirit, mind, and body and with a vision to create a healthy, vibrant community where everyone has the ability to reach their potential. You know, core to all that we do, uh, our core values mean a lot to the YMCA and are embedded in all the programs and services that, that we deliver. So honesty, caring, respect, um, belonging, honesty, all embedded in all that you would see and do. So lots of opportunity within in the Y. Um, you know, from a career perspective, one of the interesting things is the YMCA may typically, uh, the community may know us as a gym and swim, but there's so many uh, variety of programs that we offer and give a, a real great opportunity for, for making the YMCA a place uh, for a career. Um, so again, as, as nationally, we've got a, a track record of over 170 years. Many of the things that people may not know that we're in, I think um, when we talk about health, we really focus on the social determinants of health and how all of the things um, from, from access to health services and, and getting engaged in, in healthy activities to uh, housing, to employment, really try to support the whole person, ensuring that that, that comprehensive view of health. So we run uh, child care centers, health and wellness facilities, camps, newcomer centers, and uh, still so all looking at a, creating a sense of belonging. But we'll really look at, we've got a number of programs uh, like housing and um, our, our Live Well program that's run in partnership with Hamilton Health Sciences and McMaster University for chronic disease prevention programs. Uh, the great thing about the YMCA too is making a career. It doesn't have to just be local to the region. Uh, the YMCA is part of a, a larger network of over 50% of the YMCA is being concentrated in Ontario. So it provides a great opportunity to expand and grow in an organization. Uh, we've got 125 uh, plus centers uh, between child cares and health fitness and aquatic centers in, uh, in the region. Uh, YMCA Greater Toronto has 420 locations in Southwestern Ontario. 200. So even in terms of career expansion, it gives you a great opportunity to grow and network. So just programs at a glance, again, um, across, across Canada, um, 60 health, fitness, and aquatic centers. Uh, we've got more than 600 locations of child care for those that have got an interest in, in healthy child development and learning to support you know, children and our youngest members and being active, and over 25 employment and training locations. Uh, we also over Lots of uh, indoor and outdoor education, as well as uh, day and overnight camping up at, at Wanakita. So for those that have got an interest in health and wellness around outdoor education, um, also lots of great career opportunities there. Um, we run all the immigrant settlement services um, for, the, for the city. And so as, as we welcome you know, new, many new people into Canada, um, our staff will work to help integrate it both in schools and um, language assessments and a lot of different services to make sure uh, that there is support provided there. We also run a number of emergency shelters and drop-in centers and have specialized program like anti-human trafficking that are involved in uh, keeping our community safe. So in terms of specific roles um, in health, fitness, and aquatics, we've got roles uh, like personal training and health and wellness, some of the traditional roles you would see. A live well specialist, which is our chronic disease management um, area in partnership with the hospital, so a great opportunity to grow and expand there. I think this is a great example of, of what the YMCA allows is specializing in program development. So I was given that partnership about 13 years ago to say, could we develop something? And, and now it's a, a model of evidence-based care across the country. Um, we've got roles in membership, lifeguards, child youth programs. Uh, we do fitness certifications. So staff have the ability to become certified trainers and training educators uh, supporting the program development across the country. Um, asset management and housekeeping. Uh, in child care and community outreach, we have roles such as um, registered early childhood educators, assistant educators, and working in before and after school programs. Uh, camps, as I said, the overnight camp and indoor camps provide a great opportunity for outdoor education learning. Um, we've got lots of positions available on employment and newcomer training services. 
And in addition for association services, many often find in terms of the trajectory of career growth, um, they may want to pick up opportunities in you know, yeah, HR or philanthropy. And one of the great things I valued in, in all of our roles that as people come in for one uh, particular area like health and wellness, you end up learning a lot of different uh, skill sets, you know, like budgeting and fundraising and things to support uh, your, your career growth. So that's our, our link there. Uh, we've got lots of current job postings available, both full-time and part-time. So encourage people to check us out there. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, Genevieve. And lastly, I'd like to invite my colleague Hussam El Deep. He is a career advisor and, and with a focus on working with our international students. So um, I'd like to invite uh, Hussam just to give some information about uh, what he does and any advice to our international students. Welcome Hussam, please go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all the employers for the uh, important information. Um, I won't take too much of your time. I just want to talk a little bit about um, who we are and how we can support our students and alumni. Um, whether you're domestic, international student, you still receive the same service. Um, so every college and university will usually have a career center. Um, that career center will support you with anything career related. And that could be as simple as writing a resume or career exploration um, or any career advising sort of um, service that you're looking for. So here at Mohawk College, the career center is called Student and Graduate Employment. And that is who we are. Um, in order to get in touch with us, um, I would strongly suggest you get on career ready mohawkcollege.ca. Again, that's careerready.mohawkcollege.ca. You would log in with your My Mohawk username and password. If you're an alumni, you can always contact success at mohawkcollege.ca. Um, and, you know, that way we can book an appointment for you, talk a little bit about what you're going through in terms of your career and how we can support you and eliminate any barriers to employment that you might have. Um, on that same portal, the careerready.mohawkcollege.ca website, um, you can book an appointment. You can job search on there as well, where we do have a job board um, where employers uh, seek out students and upcoming graduates and alumni as well. Um, and we post those jobs on our own job board on careerready.mohawkcollege.ca. In addition to that, we do have a calendar for our events um, on, on that same website where you can register for similar events such as this one, uh, workshops, um, any uh, sort of career-related uh, workshop or event that's taking place will be on that calendar. So I just wanted to mention that. Please uh, get in touch with us if you're looking for any career, advise, um, career advising or um, career support of any kind. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Rusam. So that concludes our introductions. Um, thank you to our employers um, and our association and thank you, Hussam, once again. Um, for our employers, uh, I'll repeat once again. So the session has been recorded, your presentations were recorded and will be shared with um, our 200 students in the program. Um, and then Tara also had some information for you with regards to sharing that information. So go ahead, Tara. Great, thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, to our employers that are here today, thank you so much for that wonderful information about your facilities. I've uh, had a chance to visit them all at some point and, and they're all great places. And I know you, you are strong supporters of our students. So currently the students are in a course right now um, or just sorry they're just about to start a course called career management and also another one called industry employability so what I, i'm hoping from our uh, employers that are here today is when we send when i send this e-blast out to the students with the recording of this video if you would like to have me include uh, some information about how to apply for a job at your facility or how to get more information if you would like to email that to me and I'll put my email address in the chat bar in just a minute, um, please do so because I'd love to send that along on your behalf to all of the students. Um, we have some going into semester two in January, but we also have some entering semester four and will be graduating in April. So please reach out to me with any questions and I'll put my email in the chat bar now. Wonderful, thank you, Tara. Um, I'll open up the floor for any questions. So it looks like Huron Creek has just joined us. Um, 
Hi there. Sorry, just kidding. May I please know who the representative is? Yeah, hi, this is Dawn Sarabura. Sorry to join late, but uh, we're a little short staffed this week. We had a funeral um, for oh, one of the staff. So um, not one of the staff, a family of one of the staff. Um, and I just wanted to apologize for being late and thank you for inviting me. Uh, I am here at the gym right now. And um, yeah, if anybody has a question for me, um, we're 10,000 square feet. We're looking for a part-time trainer right now. Okay, wonderful. Um, okay. If you'd like to share some more information about Huron Fitness, please go ahead. Okay, so I'll take a minute to do that. I'm just making sure I stay uh, where I'm safely away from my other members. Um, so I am in the gym right now. Um, we're open. We, uh, we're a family owned gym. We're a small business. And um, here at Heron Creek, we have a diverse population. So our population is um, high school kids after school, a lot of seniors in the morning and then mixed in the evening. We are a full gym with cardio weights and machines, also a yoga boutique, and we also have fitness classes. Our staff is very dedicated. Our staff averages having been here for 10 years. And um, we are looking for, I said a part-time trainer, but it's actually, um, it's almost full-time hours. It's more like three quarters. And um, I can tell you that we have a great mentorship program because one of our, uh, our head of PT is very interested in mentorship and leadership. So once a week we have a personal trainers meeting educating all the staff. Um, in addition, we just are a really great group of people who works very closely together. We are a small staff. Um, what else can I tell you? Many, many of our classes are online as well as live. Uh, we're interested in people who are excited about teaching as well as people who are personal trainers. I'm on site as the owner. Uh, this is my 30th year in business and fitness. And we're located in Ancaster in a beautiful building. I'll just show you a real quick view around. So here's a cardio. And then can't really see the whole thing. You can see it's pretty quiet right now. And uh, I don't know if there anybody, you know, what else I could possibly add, but to say that we're very committed to our employees. We feel that happy employees will lead to happy members. So thank you for letting me do that. I appreciate it. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Don. Appreciate that. Um, does, anyone have, yeah. does anyone have any questions? Okay. Oh, we have Bob Brown. Please go ahead. You're on mute, Bob. There we go. It finally unmuted for me. Um, so thank you very much for having us today. And thank you to the uh, employers for coming here today. It was a very interesting presentation. Uh, once again, it was at the other one the other week, the uh, Meet the Employer um, panel, which is also very interesting as well. So um, I don't know how much time I have for questions because I actually have quite a few. So I don't know if anyone else has any questions first because I don't want to take up everybody's time. All right, I guess- Bob, you're is. welcome to go ahead, please. Uh, go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Um, Thank you. Uh, I know Good Life has the Good Life Personal Training Institute. I actually did that program. And I know a lot of fitness centers do um, additional certifications for spin instructor or stuff like that, which I'm also interested in uh, spin instructor. Uh, and I asked um, Jenica last week uh, about this, but being visually impaired, one of the reactions I get when an employer realizes even though I put in the applications that I am visually impaired is 
will let you know, or we do not want to set you up to fail. So being a person who is visually impaired, what do I need to do to impress employers to give me the opportunity to prove that I'm not going to fail because I have a sight problem, but I'm going to succeed despite having a sight problem. And then uh, in addition to that, um, uh, whether you're working, um, you know, customer service or any other position within a facility, what sort of stuff would you need to have to get a certification as a spin instructor or anything else? Um, I have some other questions, but I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Do, do you want me to take that? Uh, that would be lovely. Thank you, David, please. So <clears throat> in terms of, uh, of uh, being uh, visually impaired, uh, one of the first questions that we ask you when we, uh, we do the uh, phone screens, if you need any accommodations, just, just uh, specifically say that uh, if you will uh, be successful in, in, our, uh, in our screening process, uh, you will be transferred to uh, be interviewed by the hiring manager. Uh, they will be informed of any accommodations that you need for the interview. So that's, that's uh, to answer your first question. Uh, I don't believe uh, it shouldn't, uh, uh, you know, deter you for applying for any personal training position. If you are a, a certified personal trainer, or if you completed the, uh, the Mohawk uh, fitness and health promotion uh, uh, program. So apply. Uh, one of our uh, talent acquisition specialists will reach out to you. If the first question we ask in the screen is if you did, if you need any accommodations, uh, please uh, be open on that, and then we'll just transfer all your information to the hiring manager. Uh, it it's it's not a it shouldn't be a barrier for you to apply uh, and be uh, considered for a position. Uh, that's the first as as per uh, spin instructor I know, and it's not my field <laughs> so I don't know if I uh, but I know that uh, I, if you'll go through uh, um, um, spin specifically is, is a trademark so uh, you have to be uh, certified by a, a certified trademark uh, spin instructor uh, but Les Mills is doing uh, something similar which is they call RPM uh, which is cycling uh, you can try and get on the website for Les Mills and figure out if they have, if they're doing certification. I don't know who is running certifications at this point. Um, uh, maybe one of my other colleagues know uh, some more information regarding that. I myself love doing spin, so. <laughs> Where was the um, um, education manager for the spinning program with Mad Dog Athletics in California for four years before I moved back to Toronto? And okay. we did certified individuals who were visually impaired. What you should do, Bob, is contact the uh, company that you wish to work with and specifically provide them with your situation and ask them if they will provide training for you under those conditions. Great, awesome, thank you. And then if I may, I know the YMCA also does, uh, as you mentioned, your certifications for fitness instructor or personal trainers. Is it CanFit, is it CSAP, or is it you're certified by the Y for the Y? Thank you. Great question. We get asked that a lot, Bob. Um, the YMCA has its own certification, but it is um, recognized and equivalent uh, across the country and at various organizations. So um, it's our own, our own certification that's been developed. We do certify in personal training, group fitness, cycle fit, aqua fit, healthy child development. So there's a number of different certifications that we offer. Uh, one of the things I will say is, um, as we've learned throughout uh, COVID, there's been some adaptations made to the program where there's a combination of some of the theory being online. And so through that program, we haven't been running any courses um, recently, but will be in the new year. That does give an opportunity if you're able to have um, say a learning partner or someone that can go through things with you. Uh, but as, as others have said, if you could just identify what supports are needed, um, we, you know, we, we'd like to take down barriers and make sure that we find any way to help make sure that learning and experience is positive for you. 
So it's I, a kind I'm of sorry. all the certifications. There's a combination of theory and um, and then in person practical. So we would we uh, could work to uh, support you with that. Also, want to mention that uh, Good Life is recognizing the uh, YMCA personal training certification as well. So if you come with a with a uh, to good life with uh, the YMCA personal training certification, it is recognized by us. Great. Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you, Bob, for the question. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Please feel free to put your question in the chat or you're welcome to unmute yourself. Terry, I'm comfortable too with uh, following the presentation. If you wanted to share our contact information and emails, happy to have that go out if there's any further questions after this. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Genevieve. I appreciate that. Awesome. I see um, Randy's got a hand up there, Sherry. Oh, great. Okay, Randy, please uh, go ahead and ask your question. Perfect. I just want to thank everybody, first of all, and first and foremost, for being here. Um, just on behalf of the Mohawk students, as well as the teachers, it's a great facility. And I uh, just have a question for Momentum. I've, I've taken a peek at, um, at your website. Great facility. Uh, it's a twofold question. What would you how would you convey the atmosphere being in the gym? Of course, some of the, some of the larger size commercial gyms could still hold the, the small family dynamic type of uh, interactions with the client. So that would be the first question. What, what, how would you explain the atmosphere and the, the client to, to trainer sort of interactions? And then the second would be all of the job postings for CPTs or any sort of training positions all show a mandatory one year of experience. Um, however, you're on the Mohawk, uh, you know, Zoom call, just kind of conveying your welcoming, you know, new, new industry, people that are new into the fitness industry. So yeah, can you just kind of touch on that a little bit? And that'd be great. Thank you. So yeah, um, I'm going to talk about in behalf of Momentum. Um, the environment at the, at the gym, we are a little bit different from the big box gyms like Good Life and uh, other gyms. Um, we're a boutique style gym, so it's more of a personal gym, let's say. So it's the environment, it's more you're gonna go. We are 24-7, so uh, we don't have a front desk. You when you become a member, you're gonna get your access card. So you have to book your workouts. For example, right now, because of COVID and everything, we are still asking and requiring the booking system because it's working uh, for us and all of clients are enjoying that because they can have some accountability uh, for them because they are booking and they have to show up and everything. So your the client have the availability to go whenever they want to go, do their training. Um, the boutique style, it's like I said, it's a little bit different because we tend to cap our membership. So uh, depending on the number that we reach, we are not, we're going to stop selling uh, memberships. So just not to get too proud because uh, for us, the most important uh, thing inside Momentum, it's your, um, your experience inside of that. Uh, about the job posting, I'm not I cannot say anything about it because it's from it's for Tyler, the owner, uh, to explain. I can share his email and you can contact him with some questions. He knows that I'm doing this, uh, Pano. And like I said, it's the, the hiring system. I got hired without a, a, a personal training experience. Um, what I have to say, um, it's my feeling, okay? Um, at moment, and we all we always welcome um, any type of training. Um, I have to say, that I think the indeed requires sometimes uh, that you have to post something of a qualification or experience. The I know that the last posting that we did, we require that because it's a it's not only for personal training; it's also for management um, a little bit. So it's, that's the only thing I know 
uh, talking to Tyler. So I'm going to apologize not to explain a little bit more in depth with that. I hope I answer your question, Randy. If I could jump in there, I think uh, kind of on behalf of Randy's question, we hear this a lot from our students and maybe the employers can address it more globally is they're worried that when they graduate, especially with COVID, they haven't had that hands-on practical experience. Uh, so there's a lot of students that are nervous about this lack of uh, one-year experience. I don't know if any other employers can address that. I'd like to speak to that if I may. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so um, I've mentored a lot of people and I've hired a lot of people. And all I have to say is, if you're excited about the job, apply and don't be afraid of not having the exact experience. You can just, you know, if you hear no, you hear no. It's worth trying if you're excited about the thing and you have to start somewhere. We've all started somewhere. We put a one year minimum experience because that's our ideal and you have to put something, but the, for the right person comes along, many, many places will train you. I have done that and I, one of my very, very best trainers didn't even finish his CanFit Pro. He started on the desk. He finally took his exam. He's one of our best trainers and I took a chance on him and I'm very happy I did. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the other managers and owners are out there shaking their heads yes to this. Uh, the other thing I would say is in life, Get used to hearing no. Try, do your best. And if they say no, you can try again or you can just move on, but learn from it and don't take it too personally. But it's, I think if you're interested, it's worth a shot. That's great advice. Thanks, Don. You're welcome. Did Lucinda also have a comment? Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to add one of the other options available to individuals who are looking to get into personal training is to uh, complete a certification that includes them completing hours with potential clients. Um, with our organization, uh, CPTN, all of our trainers are expected to do a minimum of 20 hours of one-on-one -on -one training if they do not have a degree or a diploma in the physical sciences. So that will help to lend to the experience that some organizations are looking for. It may not be the one year, but showing that you have a little bit of training under your belt will help to go a long way as well. Thank you, Lucinda and Genevieve. Yeah, I think I just want to echo the same thing. I think you know all employers, particularly given the impact of a global pandemic, um, are all really committed to training and development. So. Um, what I would encourage to consider is for many is there if there are things like a, a certification that could be something that's a condition of employment that within a certain time frame it's completed and so just being aware of those things ahead of time. Uh, but I also think thinking about um, transferable skills. So what are the things that have been picked up, um, you know, throughout throughout school, whether it's in a part time job, those are all transferable skills which still count towards experience. It doesn't have to be one year of full-time experience before going into something. And I think it's, you know, that's what's great about so many of the organizations featured here today is there's opportunity for part-time work. So thinking about getting your foot in the door and, and getting in with a career early and being able to, uh, to grow. And, but I think coming in prepared to talk about in an interview, thinking about examples of transferable skills, prepping for that can help overcome any of the obstacles that might be seen in an interview. But again, happy to, if there's any questions or consults once people see the distribution of the video to help answer any apprehensions people might have. That's awesome. Thank you, Genevieve. And David, please go ahead. So uh, I want to, to add to that. Um, I, I would, uh, uh, when you, when you uh, read uh, in an application uh, or in a, in a post that uh, needed experience, always add the, the word asset at the end. Uh, it's an asset. It's not an. It's not a must. Uh, development is uh, at the at the forefront of of any uh, any of the employers over here on the uh, on the panel. Um, and uh, if you have your certification or your diploma, this is uh, already quite quite a lot of experience as is. Uh, but uh, everybody can as as was said before. Everybody starts somewhere. 
uh, the first and foremost, you need passion to help others. That's that's before everything else. So just just think about it like this: if you have that and you have a certification, you you're more likely to get hired. Well, and we'll talk three years down the road if you'll have enough experience by then. So that's. Uh, Thank you so much, Dave. David, that's uh, such great advice from each of you. Uh, taking it back to Randy, uh, did that answer your question? I see that you've raised your hand again. Please. Yeah, so yeah, sorry, I was multitasking. I apologize, everybody, if I conveyed that a little inadequately, but that was fantastic. I appreciate everybody's feedback. I just had one other question. I'm sure everybody will enjoy. So, I've been speaking with a lot of the professors about anatomical functioning and how important and critical it is to understanding anatomy more 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 interestingly um the nervous system um you know understanding uh muscle origins and insertions and my question is how how critical or is is it for some or what would differentiate somebody who let's just say has a, a similar certification as a personal trainer but on the other end one one of the applicants would would have a greater understanding of the holistic perspective of anatomy, understanding origins and insertions, uh, the nerve the nerve mapping and anatomy, and and all of the really detailed oriented information in terms of someone who just has a, a CPT uh, certification and really can't convey and and get too in depth with with the anatomical functioning and and how things work, um, or even from a physiological standpoint, you know, of course it puts you up in terms of, of uh, being desired. But if someone, if people just feel like they wanna to touch on that, that would be fantastic because I think that's something that's critical and uh, often overlooked. It is a lot of information for people to absorb, but um, that's just where I'm, where I'm at is trying to understand the, the nerve mapping and the anatomy. And yeah, if anyone would like to elaborate on that, I would, I would really appreciate that. Okay, awesome. I believe Genevieve's hand went up first. So yeah, yeah please go. Oh, yeah, no, I, we have I, think, a lot of I think it's a it's a great question. Um, one of the things that you might want to check, and I'll, I'll give a, an example to this, um, and the YMCA certification, the first the first part of um, the certification is basic theory, which goes through anatomy and um, uh, like a many of the things you talked about. For anyone that comes in with a, an education that like like you're describing, like the Mohawk program or a, a kinesiolo kinesiology program. They're actually, they can challenge that exam and go through it. So there's actually ways that if you're coming with that level, you can fast track through, through some certifications right in uh, to the practical application. Um, so I think, you know, the, the biggest thing, you know, through any education, regardless of where it's coming from, is the ability to translate it and apply it in a, a setting and environment that makes sense to the people that you're serving. Um, so I think it's definitely seen as an asset. And I, I would say if we saw someone coming in with, uh, an educational background, um, but not a certification. I think the educational background for sure is going to be seen as um, probably a preferable asset because the the certification, you know, is a shorter experience we can add on to. So I think it's definitely an asset for sure um, to consider. But you also might want to flag that when going through certifications that it it may allow you allow you some fast track opportunities. Perfect. Thank you, Genevieve and uh, GT. So one thing that I, I think that it's important um, and that like being a Mohawk student differentiate you from um, just a person that is getting uh, their certification is, you, is that you know way more than they do because you're learning. Yeah. And on the practical side of that, you're going to be able to understand a little bit better when your client asks um, to reach their goals. So if they're going, oh, I wanna lose weight, because you're taking a lot of nutrition classes, a lot of physiology classes, a lot of anatomy classes, you're gonna understand how your client moves and how you're gonna be able to um, do a way better program. And it's, a, it's a more specific program for that person. So having the background, having the, the health, wellness, fitness, uh, knowledge, you're going to be able to provide a little bit of more care. And speaking a little bit of anatomy, like you said, like insertion, origin of the muscles and everything. For me, it is, again, I'm a physio. I'm also a personal trainer. 
for me, it's one of the most important things because you're going to be able to do progressions and also understand the regressions for your client. So understanding that you're going to be, you have a bunch of knowledge that you can put in place instead of just, just in having um, uh, certification for that. So having that background, having your like studying health, wellness, and fitness, going a little bit more in depth on how the body works, on how the body functions, you're going to be able to provide a little bit of care and understanding and explaining a little bit more uh, to your client, which is you're going to sell your personal training a little bit easier because you're going to provide with way more information you're, and you're going to be able to train them on the best way possible. Awesome. Thank you, GT. And next we have Katarina. Yes, thank you. Uh, that was actually an excellent question. Um, and I just wanted to share. So recently I started training a violinist and um, so through the academic programs and all the things that we've learned and studied in anatomy, uh, we've I don't think we've ever, ever had an example of like, here is a musician. So how do you train a musician? And we don't even think of how taxing playing a violin, uh, practicing a violin, and then playing it in a concert and being prepared mentally and physically for something like that would actually be. I didn't have to go over what muscles and what joints are working and uh, what nervous system is doing during uh, like some during a violin practice. All I had to do is actually talk to my client and uh, research a little bit more about how um, how his day is going and what he needs help with in order to prescribe a proper program for him. So having the physiology and having the anatomy in such, um, in such a great detail taught to us by Tara and few other unimportant uh, professors <laughs> uh, was insanely, like now that I look at it, it was so, important and it was so um, imperative to what I'm doing right now because never did I think that I would have been contacted by someone who is playing a violin and then I have to figure out how to train them and again without the without uh, the academic knowledge of anatomy I wouldn't know how to properly prepare the um, the program and the training so that's that would be a practical use of your academic teaching at Mohawk, I guess. Thank you. That's awesome. Such great advice. We appreciate it. Um, and yes, a comment from Lucinda, please go ahead. Um, I think the more uh, knowledge base that you come into a certification with, the better, obviously, uh, because you can be more detailed in your assessment of your client. Then you never know what will be presented to you as Katerina assessed. Perfect example in this day and age, um, never in my wildest dreams did I think that their personal trainers would be working with gamers, people who spend the entire day in front of a computer playing computer games, but they need a fitness level because they are sitting for eight to 20 hours sometimes doing minute um, movements, which causes a lot of injury. So having that physiological neurological information on your belt is definitely going to add to the service that you can provide to them. Um, and I just wanted to add, I think there's a big misnomer in the industry where many people think that personal trainers are not educated. I can attest to you that with CPTN in particular, over 82% of our trainers hold either a university degree or a college diploma, and some have their masters and PhDs. So you're not dealing with just individuals who have a high school um, diploma. They have extensive knowledge. So the more knowledge you can come in and uh, come in with and separate yourself from what's already out there, the better off you will be. Awesome, thank you for that, Lucinda. Just being mindful of the time, I do have one other question that came through the chat. Um, 
that I do not want to miss. And I am just going to read this on behalf of our student, uh, Kazi. Um, so Kazi, and let me, sorry, let me just pull that up again, one second. Um, Kazi is a, uh, has a degree in physiotherapy from out of country. Um, and he is a first year student and actively job searching right now. And just wondering if there are any entry level, like part-time opportunities um, that he might be able to benefit from. So Kazi, I'm sorry, he's not in a position to unmute and ask the question. So I hope I did you justice in that, um, just reviewing uh, our, our conversation. But yeah, he has a degree in physiotherapy from out of country. Uh, like I said, is a first time, first year student um, and is looking for part-time opportunity and wanting to know if there's anything available to him. So if any of our employers can respond to that, I'd appreciate it. The YMCA has lots of um, part-time opportunities right now. And if you visit our YMCA careers page, all of them will be posted there. Awesome. Thank you, Genevieve. And uh, Don, please go ahead. Oops. Hi. Yes, yeah, so Hi. we are we are actively looking to hire somebody. So if you want to send a resume, uh, all our information should be there available to you. Uh, I could tell you really quickly, it is staff at herroncreek.ca. So we we'll definitely give a look to your resume. Earl, do you mind typing that in the chat really quick if you don't mind? Staff at heroncreek.ca. Yeah, heron, H-E-R-O-N. Oh, we you got have, it. Sorry, Tara. Thank you, Tara. And uh, David, please go ahead. Uh, so uh, personal training, uh, unfortunately, at Good Life is a full-time uh, uh, career. Uh, however, we have other uh, positions such as a uh, motivator, which is a uh, front desk uh, personnel uh, that is, you can do that on a, on a part-time uh, uh, level. Uh, you just need to go to jobs.goodlifefitness.com. Uh, I will uh, send the uh, I will send the link uh, to Tara uh, in the email uh, with the link uh, link of uh, of our talent acquisition specialist Teddy that is actually uh, in charge of uh, helping uh, people finding jobs as the motivators, uh, and you can reach out uh, to uh, somebody who already did that job a job at Good Life. No, th th yeah, you can. That's the email. Yes, but the, there is the website as well. So uh, and I think Kendall also helped as well on this. Uh, that would be the website. It's already in the in the chat. Uh, you can go. Uh, you can actually search by uh, search by positions, search by region, uh, search by full time, part time. All of that is on the website. Awesome! Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, Bob, I believe you have a question. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yes, I do. Thank you very much. And this has been absolutely fascinating today. Um, I'm just wondering, because different places have different costs for their programs. Um, as I mentioned, I did the, um, the Good Life personal training one, so I know what that is. But for anyone who doesn't know, what is the cost through Good Life for your personal training? Um, and then with the um, CP, uh, or, yeah, CPTN, what is your cost to say along with the why? And um, for Movadi, because you have different programs that you have and you can get certified, um, through you for different programs. What is the cost through you and uh, for, uh, as well for Heron as well? I'd be interested to know what costs are there involved with you uh, to get certified? And uh, I'm going to put Professor Dinier on the spot. Um, if an individual is interested in working at Mohawk College in the health wellness program or at another college or university when they're done, what sort of background would you need to work in the education system in this field? Thank you. I'm going to jump in quick before they answer the certification questions, just to let you know that um, we do have some pathways with CPTN and CanFit Pro directly, where you can, like Je uh, Genevieve was mentioning, you can actually bypass some of the requirements because of the knowledge you've achieved. So I can send you that information, um, and it's also on our website. I'll, I'll mute myself from there, and then I think Sherry's going to pass it on. Actually, Bob, the uh, handout that you received from CPTN, the last page, 
is that sheet that Tara is referring to. Great, thanks. Okay, Bob, does that answer your question? Will that uh, be enough of a resource for you then? Great, <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, yes, it is, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Well, that concludes our event. It looks like we've gone a, a bit over, but such a wonderful discussion. Um, I really love the questions and uh, the advice. And, you know, I appreciate our students uh, for par participating and posing your questions and uh, for our employers and alumni for jumping in and providing such great information um, and insight. So thank you very much. and. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Tara, if you don't mind, if you have any comments or anything before we leave here today, um, please. Thanks, I'll keep it short and sweet. I know we did go over. Uh, one of the things I'm most passionate about with my job is watching our students become graduates and become alumni and thrive in this industry and make such positive changes. And we can't do that without our industry partners and employers. So thank you so much for joining us today. Please pass along your information. I'll include it in an email that goes out with this recording to all of our current students. And, um, and we'll tout your praises about how wonderful you all are. And uh, to the students that joined, thank you for your time. And to the team that helped put this great event together, thank you also as well. It couldn't have happened without many things happening behind the scenes. So I hope you all have a great weekend and thanks to everybody that was participating.